He was the game changer, revolutionising English football both on and off the field. But today, amid growing fan frustration, the game was finally up for Arsene Wenger. I mean, we need to be bold in the appointment and get the person we believe is the right person. Hi guys, and welcome to episode five of Wenger Out Fry In. So far, we've had four managers. If you haven't seen them yet, please check out the other episodes to this series. A brief uh, intro into what this series is about is basically with Arsene Wenger leaving, um, I've done a, a football manager experiment to see what all the managers that have been linked with the position as Arsenal manager, um, how they would perform if they got the role. So that's basically what the experiment is. I've then um, evaluated each of the manager's performances and then put them in a table. And the next one up is 16th place. So on some of these shows, what I've been doing is updating, or what I want to do is update on the current transfer talk for Arsenal. Because obviously with a new manager coming in, um, there's always going to be a lot of changes. Obviously the way that I think Arsenal will be setting up is uh, Rule and Sven will be doing a lot of the transfer dealings and whoever comes in, that will be their squad that they have to, to work with. Uh, and I know that there's been a lot of talk um, about who Sven likes and who he wants to get in and his ideas of how to, to make the club better. So let's have a look and see which um, players have been linked. So there's also been some manager links as well. So obviously the previous show that I've done... Um, linked uh, Buvac from Liverpool. Um, it's gone a bit quiet, but it did get reported on Sky Sports uh, and Eurosport and a few other places. So it could go down still, uh, but it has gone quiet. Uh, there are some other managers that I might do shows on as well after this because um, these guys aren't in the top 20. So the, the other managers that have been linked are Paulo Fonseca from Shakhtar Donetsk. And Lucien Favre from Nice. So um, I don't know too much on their managers. Um, but if you do, then please please leave a comment. Please let me know how, um, how well they've got on in their seasons and what you think they would do if they became Arsenal manager and how do you think they would perform. So, yeah, they're the managers that have been linked. Um, and now for the, the, the player transfer talk. Uh, we'll start with the outs. This is one I probably wouldn't be too upset about because his performances seem to have dropped. Um, but I don't know if a new manager coming in can get him to perform better. Um, defensively and going forward, he's I don't believe he's offered as much as he can in the promise that he showed in his first season. And that's Hector Bellerin. Um, Man United and Chelsea have been linked with him. Uh, I believe the, the most obvious deal which again has gone quiet, but it's done most of the rounds, is him going to Barcelona, uh, going back to his roots, but then us getting Osman Dembele in return. Now, he's worked with um, Albama Young before. They've got a very good relationship. Obviously, he knows Sven Muslintak because he's the guy that brought him in. So there's a lot of um, credibility in that story. But then Juventus are still hanging around as well. They've been after him for years. So that is something that could potentially happen. One that I'm not, I don't know too much about, uh, Benjamin Henricks from uh, Leverkusen. Sorry, that's an old soccer AM joke there, uh, if anyone gets it. But yeah, um, I don't know too much about him. I believe he's a defender. Uh, but if anyone does know, then please leave a comment. There's a, a young Turkish defender from Freiburg. I like the name already. Very nice. Uh, his name is Kalgar Soyunku. Now, from what I've, I've seen a few videos of him, and he does... Although he's young, he looks very, very good. And I believe that Sven has watched him for a while, so he knows a lot about him. And I think he could probably step it up. It's probably a similar mould to um, Mavropanos, who also looks very good. Um, but yeah, let maybe that come about. Apparently the Freiburg director came out earlier and said it's not going ahead. But you never know. You never know. And the uh, the other one, which is... It would be um, not a big player, but someone with uh, a lot of experience because we've been log uh, linked with a lot of youth. Uh, but this one is someone who has got a lot of experience. He's Greek. 
He is 28 years old, I believe. He plays for Borussia Dortmund. So again, Sven's link playing there. Uh, his name is Socrates, Papadopoulos. So he, um, I believe, would be a very good addition to the squad. And uh, I believe he will come quite cheap as well because he's only got a year left of his contract. So uh, talk of that has been 17 million. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So yeah, that is um, transfer news on today's date, which is the fourth of May, if I haven't already said. And yeah, let's get um, let's find out who came in 16th place. So as we can see here, the manager is the one and only. Sean Dyche, Burnley manager. Uh, we've got Burnley at the weekend, so maybe uh, they can get together and have a chit chat and discuss terms. But I can't see see it happening. He's not high profile enough. Um, but a lot of the names that have been linked haven't been ho high profile either. So you never know. So let's start with his transfer history. If Sean Dyche was the Arsenal manager, who would he sign? Quite a few players by the looks of it. He spent 65 million, so not as much as Brendan Rodgers. But he's another player that signed this Tony Vilhena. If you haven't watched the episode before, we'll have a quick look. Centre midfielder, not a bad player, not the best, but just a good squad player. 23 year old and Dutch. Um, and then from Lazio, he got Senad Lulic, pretty good price. Left midfielder, can play anywhere down the left. A 32-year-old Bosnian. Good leadership, good off the ball, good teamwork, um, good anticipation. Again, another good squad player. Nothing fantastic, but a good squad player. This is a surprising one. Daily Blind from Man United. Not great stats at all. Stamina, fitness, determination, teamwork is good again, but his technical ability is not very good at all. His passing's good, his first touch is good, but the rest, yeah, I don't know what to make of that one. Uh, anyway, a player from Lech, Robert Gummy, 19 years old, Polish, one for the future, right back, left back. The main attribute that stands out here is his pace. He's very quick, and that's what you want in a right back. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go too much into him because there's not too much to it yet, but one for the future. And then Romero from Grumirio, or Grumio, whatever you call them. Again, squads player, okay stats, 25. He's not a signing that I would have made. The only player going out is Jack Wilshire to Man City. Now, talking about the transfers before as well, Jack Wilshire is still not signed his contract. And I can see him potentially going to Man City. One, he fits in Pep's like style of play. And two, he'll add another English number to, to their squad, which obviously you've got a quota for. So um, I can see that one happening if Arsenal don't pull their finger out and, and sign him up. Because I, I love Jack Wilshere and he, I believe he needs to sign. Even if he doesn't play every game, he needs to be in around the squad. So yeah, they're the, the ins and outs. Um, nothing much to it. Let's go to the tactics. And a standard, a standard Sean Dyche formation there. 4 4 2. Daily Blinds playing in the centre. Let's go back to his stats. 12 for tackling, 12 for heading. So not the best person that you want there. Meza Ozu on the right wing. But then you've got Lacazette and Albamiang up front. So, uh, yeah, an interesting one. 4 4 2. Let's see how it worked for, for him and his players. Wow. 45 goals in 57 games for Aubameyang. Only one assist. So, obviously, he was the main goal getter. But a fantastic return from Aubameyang. A great first season. Very good. And then Lacazette as well. 27 goals in 47 games. Another great return. 7.5 average rating. Uh, and then Welbeck was the next for goals with eight. Um, who got the most assists? Now, if Meza Ozil played on the right for the whole season and he got 30 assists, that's definitely something that I'm going to try in one of my other saves. 30 assists in 53 games. That's a great return. Uh, Granite Xhaka and Awobi 
the only other two with double figures. Uh, and then average rating, um, Lacazette was third, Ozil second, Aubameyang at the top. Peter Cech, um, 7.26, Ron Corsioni 7.26 as well. So yeah, that is um, how the players performed. So let's see how they've done in the competitions. So we'll start with the Carabao Cup. Um, two away games to start off with, QPR and Millwall. Uh, both won. Conceded some goals though, so uh, a bit surprising there. Not a bad squad either. It weren't like uh, all youth players. But they managed to get through there. But then a home game to West Brom. Callum Chambers with a goal. Kalazanak didn't help matters getting sent off in the 79th minute, but it was already 1-1 at that point anyway. And, uh, yeah, quarterfinals ended up losing on penalties. So that was the Carabao Cup. Charity Shield. So, first competitive game for Sean Dyche, uh, and he won a trophy. So, not a bad start there. He played quite a youthful team as well. Holden, Maitland Niles, Willock, De Silva, Nelson... In Ketier, Dragomir. So a lot of younger players there, but they won 3 1. Let's have a look at the game. Let's go and have a look. So some younger players for Chelsea, but the majority of them were the key ones Courtois, Aspilicueta, Rudiger, Conte, Fabregas, William, Morata. So they had a pretty good squad there. Morata getting the goal. But two from Aubameyang, one for Lacazette. Good start for Sean Dyche there. We've already seen the Carabao Cup. Sorry, I went to that one first. Now for the FA Cup. Again, a good performance from Sean Dyche in this competition. He got all the way to the final. Uh, he beat Brentford, Leicester, Cardiff. The surprising thing about you've noticed in both these cup games is Sean Dyche, who is renowned for making Burnley a solid team, they conceded quite a lot of goals. And to lower league teams as well, Brentford, Cardiff. Uh, and then they got to the final of the FA Cup and they unfortunately lost. We'll, we'll have a look at that one. Went to extra time. Aubameyang and Mkhitaryan with the goals. Lukaku with two goals. So, right, looking at this, Lukaku, two goals in six minutes. Uh, getting them early in the game, the 11th and 17th minute. Aubameyang and Mkhitaryan with two goals in two minutes to take it to extra time. And unfortunately, three minutes. They didn't start as well as they finished. And uh, Lukaku got his hat-trick to win it for Man United. So, uh, unlucky. Good comeback. But overall for Daesh, no trophy. So, how did he perform in Europe? His first time in Europe. Uh, he's potentially going to be in Europe next season. Uh, with Burnley coming very close at the moment. They're knocking on Arsenal's door, so you never know what's going to happen. But he is in the group stages performed very well, won every single game apart from a draw at home to Victoria Pilsen. Uh, but then after knocking Cole out in the knockout stages, and Ketia got a goal there in that game, we ended up losing to Roma. So a 2 1 home defeat, and then we lost 1 0 away. Monreal getting sent off in that game, which uh, didn't help. Dzeko scoring the goal soon after. Okay, so let's have a look at the Premier League. Looking up to the end of January, there's quite a lot of wins on there. Uh, only three defeats and five draws. So he, he played pretty well there. Lost to Man U at home, unfortunately. But then uh, beat Liverpool. Lost to Spurs, so uh, disappointing there. But then he beat Man City. Mertesacker getting a goal. Beating Chelsea 4-0 at home. He likes playing Chelsea by the looks of it. Then we lost 2-1 away to Man United. And that was the only defeat in quite a good run. How did the end of the season finish? So again, not too bad. He lost away to Everton, drew with Brighton. Lost at home to Swansea and drew away to Man City. Um, but some, quite a lot of wins there for Sean Dyche, to be fair. Let's see how, how it finished in the Premier League. So as you can see, we finished third. We lost the least amount of games. Drew nine. So, as he's done for, for Burnley, he's made them pretty solid. Aubameyang and Lacazette, the two top goal scorers. So, that's good. That hasn't happened for a while. And only six points off of 
the top with Man U. So overall, he won the Community Shield, he lost in the final of the FA Cup, and he came third in the league. So it, it weren't a bad season for Sean Dyche. The fact that he finished third, giving him some extra brownie points, um, and he was so close, and he's made us a bit more solid. Goal difference was the, the same for all the top three. Yeah, so if you look overall, conceded 16 at home, 14 away, 71 goals for his home record. Now, he would have liked a better home record. Three defeats at home, two draws. He was much better away, two defeats. Now, they drew quite a lot, to be fair. But, um, yeah, a pretty good performance there from Sean Dodge. Unfortunate to finish in 16th, but um, to to see why he finished in that position and why the other manager's done better than him, you will need to stay tuned. And you will need to watch the next episode, which will be out very soon. Um, I hope you've liked this one. Thank you for watching. Again, if you if you did like, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, uh, if anything, it will just keep you up to date with um, when my um, videos will be coming out. But um, thanks for all the support, guys. And... Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you soon. Thank you very much.